Good morning, Stampers and Crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. Today we are going to do a, I call them Stampscapes. And it's going to be quick and simple. And I had multiple requests for it. This is a card I did for the, uh, my upline team always does card swaps when new catalogs, uh, anything new comes out. And we do these card swaps. And um, this one was for the mini and the celebrations. And I wanted to do a little moonlight cabin. So that's what we are going to make today. Thank you very much, by the way, to everybody that sent me emails and requests. And I'm sorry it took so long to get around to this. I'm going to get ready for my vacation. Hopefully this new COVID doesn't end up canceling it. Um, my husband and I are going to Hawaii to renew our 30th wedding anniversary vows. So real excited about that and hope it still goes through. But anyway, I wanted to get together and make this card with you. We're going to learn a couple of different techniques doing it. So let's jump in and get started. Below, I will have a PDF that has the images and all the measurements and the supplies used to create this card. So, one of the things you're going to need is this new Peaceful Cabin stamp set. Uh, look at the detail in this. It's, I love it, and it's just perfect for this. And it comes with coordinating dies. Look at that. Um, I think there's 13 dies all together. you got trees, you got the detailed cabin. You have the actual scape type dies there with some trees. Well, the only thing we used for this one today is I used this cabin die cut to create myself a mask. Okay? If you don't have masking paper like this, um, you can use sticky notes, whatever you need to do just to mask your cabin. And when I die cut it, I use the die to die cut it. I noticed that it's it's not quite as close to the cabin here as I would like because we're going to be doing some mass damping. So I'm just going to trim that off just like that. Easy peasy. Easy peasy peasy. Let's do this. Okay, so we need our cabin to start. And we are going to, instead of using white and creating our blue background, we're just going to use a piece of Pacific Point cardstock here. Like I said, the measurements are all going to be below. I believe this is three by three by four and a quarter, I believe. But it'll be below for you. All right. So let's bring in our Stamparatus. You're definitely going to want your Stamparatus for this because you're 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 stamping on a darker colored cardstock. You want your images to be dark and sharp. So let's do this. Let's put our image piece in here. Now I want my cabin to be closer toward the bottom and offset slightly to the left. Reason being because we're going to be creating our, our starry sky, so we want to give plenty of room for that. So let's bring it down. Man, that looks pretty good. Let's go with it. We're just going to be using regular black memento ink. And let's stamp it. Yep, see, now, now see how it's kind of light on this darker paper, so we'll just stamp it again and get a nice crisp image. I don't even know how I functioned before stamp positioning tools came around. I really don't. There we go. Look at that. Looking great. Looking great. So now we want to create the woods behind our cabin. And that brings in our masking. So now in this set comes these pine trees. They do not come separated like this. I cut mine apart. Okay, it's normally like this. Okay, 
You don't have to do that, but I did cut mine apart. I mean, you can still use them as one piece if you wanted. You just put a little piece of masking tape behind there, and, and then it'll fit your dies. But just so you know, it doesn't come in two pieces like that. All right, let's line up our trees here. Oh, forgot our mask. So here's our mask. Like I said, use what you have. Um, if I can find, I mean, this package of masking I have is uh, very old. Um, I may have even got it at the craft store. But if I can find um, what it is and where I got it, I will add it to the supplies below, a link. Now, when you're doing a mask like this, you want to try, let me see if I can pick this up. If you look really close, let's see if I can get my camera to focus. I leave a line. See where the, the stamped line is? I bring my mask down just ever so slightly because the masking itself has a ridge and when you stamp, it's going to leave a little gap there. But if you bring your masking down just a hair, it'll help compensate for that when you stamp. Just a little tips and tricks. So let's put our cabin back in here. Now, you want to make sure whatever mask you decide to use, I would make sure it covers the entire bottom of your image here because you don't want your trees to accidentally stamp on there. So we're going to grab these trees, bigger ones, I'm going to offset it off the side just a little bit. Let's pick it up. And the detail in these trees, if you do it on white or even on here, is so neat. It, uh, two tone dimension stamping there is just beautiful. So you want to add a little more pressure right where your mask is, and that'll help keep your gaps from being there. See how you have just a little bit of gap around the masking? That's normal, but I'm also going to show you a way to fix that. So I'm going to stamp that one more time. Now I'm going to bring it over to the other side. And I'm going to again take this one off the side a little bit. We don't want to go too terribly high because we want to have our moon and our stars showing. So let's do that. You kind of would want to do this whichever way you like best. I mean, you don't even have to have as many trees. You can do just two trees. Do it any way you'd like. I'm going to stamp that one more time. And you can just ink up the top of your trees because we're not really doing much more than the tops. And then this is where I bring in my little one that I can tuck in between the spaces. So this one, I want it to be smaller and further behind these two trees. So that would mean it comes lower. So we're kind of just doing the very tip of it. I'm going to put it between these two here. So the shorter they are, the further in the distance they are. Does that make sense? I don't know, sorry, am I making sense? I haven't, haven't even had my full cup of coffee yet this morning. Yeah, there we go. So 
let's fill in some more here. We're just going to put some behind the cabin here. Make sure you don't go too high because we, we, the focal point of our image is the stars and the moon. So just want to add a line of trees behind there. Like I said, you can stop at any point. It's entirely up to you. just kind of peeking over the top of the cabin there. You could even emboss these if you wanted to get, you know, really details you could uh, do embossing on all these but don't really think it's necessary let's add one more tree in the middle here in between those two now you see why i cut them apart so i could kind of place my tree where i wanted it Looks pretty good. All right. Now, put these back. Now, a little trick you can do if you end up with a gap, you know, around where your mask is, is just take your black stamp and right marker or small black marker. And because of the design of these trees, you can just add a few little dots right up against your cabin line and it fills them in okay so you don't have gaps where your masking was all righty now we're going to lift our masking and i'm going to only lift it right here See where your die cut cut that little square? Well, see where there's gaps where your tree's not there? This is where you will use your marker to just kind of fill in your tree in there. Just do kind of a little scribbles in there. And see how it filled in your tree right there? That's it. Okay. Now I want to keep my masking in place. Lay it back down. Move this aside. Now let's create our moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little hole punch, whatever you've got. This one is a three quarter inch. And we're going to create a moon mask. So where your sticky is, is kind of where you want to Cut your little moon because that way it'll stick so where do we want our moon let's do our moon i'm kind of do it right in here so i'm going to put my mask there i'm going to take my whisper white or whatever white you have a little sponge dauber And we're just going to tap to create our moon. Now, by doing it, by tapping, or even a little bit of rubbing, just kind of randomly, it's going to give your moon some different colors and depths. Okay, or, you know, you don't want it completely white. If you just kind of dab it and smear it around, you end up with... All right, pick that up. See how it has the kind of depths of the moon? There you go, it's that simple. And lift off our masking. Look at that fun moon there. All right, now we want to create some stars. 
here's the fun technique. Now, again, like all my techniques, there's several ways you can create this effect. Even in the stamp set, if you wanted to, is some stars. Okay? You can just stamp these in white all over your sky background if you want. Simple, easy peasy, but I'm going to show you something else that's fun to do. You can use it for a lot of different effects on things. So what we need, we need a tiny little tray. I have this tiny little ceramic something or another. I don't even know where it came across. You need an old toothbrush. You need your Whisper White ink refill, or you can use, you know, uh, your white acrylics. This one right here is Dr. Phil Martin's, and I like it because it's vibrant and it doesn't bleed or fade. The Whisper White, when we, because we're going to be diluting it a little to create this, it has a tendency to uh, not be as bright. So you can use an acrylic paint, you can use um, this Dr. Martens, or you can even use... I also have this uh, liquid, it's acrylic gouache um, for doing acrylic paints and this sub fake thing of white. These will last you forever. So anyway, we are going to take a little bit, and this is a real pasty uh, white. Um, painters use it a lot. So I'm just going to dip my brush in there and get a little bit of our white out. So I, you can see this has lasted quite a while. I'll see if I can find a link to this. I, I'm not even sure I remember where I got it. I'm going to probably say Amazon since the past year I can't seem to live without Amazon. Now I'm going to take a water spritzer and just add some water to that. Just a little bit to thin it down. I'll stir it up real well. And now there's a couple of different ways that you can create your stars. But what I want to do if I recall, I think I want to mask these trees just a little bit. So we can either just use sticky notes or let's just do this. I'm just going to grab some mini sticky notes here. And it doesn't, they don't have to be masked perfectly. I just don't want a lot of stars on them. It doesn't really matter. You can. Get them on there if you want to. Let's mask those guys just a little bit. And we'll be able to fill in where we... I just don't want a lot of stars on there. Okay, I'm going to do one more. You can also use your die cut um, like we did the cabin here. Just a little bit. Okay, now, this is where we get inky and messy. You know me, I love to get inky and messy. There's a couple ways you can do this. You get the tip of your brush damp, okay? And you can either tap it on your finger, okay? And do your splatters. Or take your finger and kind of just flick the ends of that brush. And when you do that, you're going to end up with all different sizes of splatter. Okay? I'm going to grab a back here. Now I got a little bit more on my moon than I want, so all I'm going to do is just tap, wipe that off just a little bit. So I could have masked my moon if I wanted to. Okay? You're going to also take the tip of that brush and lightly tap. Okay, get a little bit on there and lightly tap the edges 
on there and you'll end up with some different sizes also okay so we're going to leave that like that for the moment and i'm going to leave my masking on there now i wanted to take my background this is my card base of the misty moonlight and to carry my theme through i'm going to do the exact same thing right here on this one i'm just going to flick some stars on there so that our theme is kind of carried through there you go your background is done like i said you can use your little and that's all i did splattered some white on there let it dry so now we're going to do a few more little tricks to this we're going to take our mask off and see that way that we don't have a lot of stars on our um, trees so let's fill in some of the little spots where my mask was in the way you can use a white gel pen um, I also have um, this, uh, it's an acrylic um, painter pen. It's like a, a gel pen, but it's a little more vibrant, like I said, and it seems to work, you know, finding a white gel pen that is really good seems to be difficult for me. I've tried so many. So I'm going to take this and you got to get it started. Let's see if I can get it started here. I don't, remember, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Myosin acrylic painter. And I just love this. And it's got one of those push start type tops. There we go. Now I'm just going to tap in a couple extra little size stars in there. Fill in where my mask was. Okay, there we go. We have our stars. And I'm going to show you a trick how to make glowing stars. See where I've just added a few that glow? We're going to take a regular old Q-tip. Okay. Make sure your end is nice and tight there. Now I'm going to use my white stamp pad I'm going to tap the end of my q-tip in there and you can do it on a piece of scratch too just to make sure you don't have too much on it so get a little ink on the end of that pick one of your stars that you want to glow and just tap it on there a little bit okay and you you don't want a whole lot. You want it to be kind of foggy. So you can even tap it off a little. And let's make that one foggy. Or glowing. I guess they're not foggy. They're glowing. Let's add one more. And we have some glowing stars. What you can do is take your gel pen and right in the middle of that glow, just kind of put your dot a little bit brighter so it kind of looks like a bright star that's glowing. Okay. And we have our snowy sky. I'm going to uh, touch up this little guy here. Okay, now at that isn't that fun now we want to create our moonlit accents oh you know what we forgot I forgot to add there's a there's a really cute tiny little fox in here so let's have our little fox running through the scene here as I find where he is. There he is. So I'm going to put him probably down here to the right bottom. Just 
do him in black also. Oops, I grabbed white. Just going to do some detail work. Okay, I'm going to take my little q tip again, real quick, and kind of even up my moon here a little. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take our Y marker again. Let me see if I can zoom in for you here. Let me zoom in a little bit on this guy. Think you can see that okay? There we go, I think so. So now, we want to take our white gel pen and we're going to add moon highlights. Okay? You're going to have some moon highlights on the top of your roof here. And we'll just add a few little streaks down or across. You can even tap it with your finger to kind of make it a little foggier. And we've got a little bit of moon shining here. Because remember, this is snow. We have a little bit on our chimney top where the moon is glowing. It also gives your cabin a little bit more dimension. Okay, now I want to put, it's got a little window here. And the little window, I'm just going to do dots. And then when this, this white dries, I'm actually going to make yellow glowing inside. Okay, so we've got a little window there. Let that dry. Our little box has a little moon on him. And now, we are going to add a little bit of white snow. I noticed that one of my trees here, right behind the cabin, didn't stamp, obviously, because of the mask. This is where you do your little dotting and detail behind there. There you go. Done deal. It's amazing that just this small little amount of and the white and detail just kind of make your image pop. Now the moon is shining on one side of the trees over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple little dots right on the edges of those trees. That's where your moon is shining up against your trees. And then the opposite way on these over here, so you'll do the left side of these trees, just a few little dots. All you're doing is representing some light on those trees. Just put a little bit on those branches. And it just really kind of makes a difference, makes it pop. Like I said, 
said use your finger or a little sponge or something just to kind of if it's a little too bold okay there we go look at that now let's see what are we missing is that dry we're going to take our what color is this this is just our Mango Melody Stamping Blend. I'm going to go right over those white in the window here. It's going to give us a yellow kind of fire inside glowing. Now we'll take our Memento, a black sponge. I think I'm going to turn this out of the way. And we're going to kind of fog the edges. Just going to give our cabin a spotlight. And we're just going to go over the corners here. Probably could have used a dauber. I'd have a little bit better control. So it's just going to give our cabin a little bit of a spotlight effect. Come a little on your bottom, the bottom here. Just doing the very edges on the, but a little bit more on the corners. And there we have our little spotlighted cap. Okay. I want my moon. I got a little bit of black there on my moon. I kind of wanted that to pop a little more. So again, I'm just going to grab a Q-tip. Get a little bit of on there. Just kind of dab it on my mat. Make sure it's nice and bright. Here might be easier. We'll just grab our topper and just go over our mat a little bit. We want it nice and bright. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Now with your wink of Stella, let me see where I put mine. Now we're going to add just a little bit of shimmer. To our snow. Oh, I wonder why that wasn't working. My new wink is still a pen. Oh, yeah. I buy a new one before the holidays because I just use a lot of shimmer on stuff. Okay. There we go. We're going to add just a little bit of shimmer on our snow here. You don't need to go into the black if you don't want to. Now we're going to add a little shimmer to the roof because remember that's snow also. And looky there, you have your starry night. And really it doesn't take that long to do. Most of your work is into the detail. So now we have a black 
um, small mat and I did a really thin mat just to kind of deepen the edges. And I'm just going to use my regular glue. See now how that kind of just intensifies the edges a little for you? And then we have our silver foil frame that just kind of pulls some of the glitter and some of the starriness out. And now when I'm using a piece of foil for a frame, I always cut out the center of mine. Nobody's going to see that. And you also have a little extra piece of foil paper to use on another project. So I'm going to go right along the edges here. Doesn't do any good to go in the middle because we know a frame isn't there. We'll line that up on here. And I'm going to glue it straight down to our mat. card base. I mean, it's not a mat, it's a card base. And there you go. If you wanted to add a few extra little bright stars to your card base, you can do it. Because it kind of just pulls it all together. You can even, if you want to just go a little beyond that, you can take your Q-tip again into your white. Let's add a couple of foggy stars. Or glowing stars, I guess. It's early. I mean, it's like really early. If you knew what time it was right now, you'd be like, really, girl? Time is it? Well, it's only 5.30 now. And there we go. That is our snowy cabin stampscape. How simple. I hope you enjoyed today's um, project and card. And you can always also, I just noticed, I did a bigger moon on this one. I like the small one too. This is probably a half inch. This one I wanted a little bit bigger moon for the class just to see how it turned out. And this is a three quarter inch hole. So you, you have your choice, whichever you'd like. There you go. There's today's class. I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye now.